Hey friends! My name is Desiree aka Mama Friendly and I do all sorts of videos on my channel from cooking videos to planner videos, vlogs, hauls, homeschool videos with a Disney twist, a little bit of everything. So if any of this sounds like fun to you, I hope that you'll subscribe and join me on my YouTube adventure. This video is extra special because it's a collab that I am hosting along with my co-host Ellie from DIY From House to Home. I'm gonna have her channel linked below so you guys can check her out and subscribe if you haven't already. But the premise of this video and the collab of course is that we wanted to invite our friends to make Easter potluck recipes, Easter treats, just basically recipes that you might serve for an Easter gathering. Now I've already released a couple recipes that I think fit this description. One of them is an asparagus prosciutto tart that I released actually as a St. Patrick's Day recipe. I'll post that up here. Very easily used for Easter and with a few modifications, which I mentioned in that video, it's even a great Passover recipe. And just last week, I released a really, really easy and delicious Whole30 chorizo breakfast, like egg bake. It had chorizo, eggs, hash browns, so good and embarrassingly easy to put together. I'll have both those recipes linked below and I'll post the chorizo bake recipe up here in a little bit. Just keep your eyes peeled. So now that you've got kind of the brunch situation handled, I thought it would be appropriate in this video to show you guys a dessert recipe. And you might know if you follow my channel, I eat gluten and dairy free exclusively. I never take breaks from it. I never cheat. It just doesn't make me feel good when I do. So it's been about seven years that I've been eating gluten and dairy free. And I've been kind of on a tear this year, making sure that all of my recipes, I think, have fit that bill. I used to do more like standard recipes and share them with my family, but we don't live with my parents anymore. And so I don't have anybody to give those foods to. So every recipe that I've put on the channel this year has been something that I can and do eat. This one is no different. So I am showing you how I'm making a lemon blueberry glazed cake. Something about the flavors of the lemon and the blueberry just scream springtime to me. And this is a really easy recipe that's also very allergy friendly. Now, before we get into the recipe, I want to remind you that because this is a collab, there's gonna be a playlist. So once you've finished watching my video, you can go into the description box and you can see that link to the playlist, click it, see what all of our friends made, and maybe you'll get some inspiration for your Easter table as well. Now, without any further ado, let me show you how I made this lemon blueberry cake. We of course begin with our ingredients for our gluten-free and dairy-free lemon blueberry cake. You're going to need a half cup of olive oil, the milder flavored the better, a cup of granulated sugar, two tablespoons of fresh lemon zest, you should be able to get this from two large lemons, two room temperature eggs, a half cup of unsweetened vanilla almond milk, a half cup of lemon juice, again these two large lemons will provide this, two cups of gluten-free flour. I like Bob's one-to-one. -one. It already has that lim gum in it, so you don't have to worry about that. Two teaspoons of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, a cup of frozen blueberries, and a tablespoon of the gluten-free blend set aside because we're going to toss our blueberries in that. For the glaze, we need a half cup of powdered sugar and three teaspoons of that lemon juice. We're gonna begin by preheating our oven to 350 degrees, and it says to use a nine by five loaf pan. I don't have a loaf pan, so I'm gonna be using an eight inch round springform pan. Also, I don't own a zester. I do not recommend trying to get your zest with a vegetable peeler. It is way too thick. But if you have a zester, by all means. If you don't, I think you might even consider skipping the zest altogether. It's not absolutely necessary. The juice is gonna provide a lot of intense lemon flavor. So I'm starting by taking my half cup of lemon juice and I'm putting it into a small little pan, slowly gonna bring it to a boil and then reduce the heat and simmer until the juice is reduced by half. So you're gonna finish with about a quarter cup of slightly thickened lemon juice. Place it in a bowl and then set it aside to cool. While your lemon juice cools, cream together your olive oil, sugar, and lemon zest, either with a stand mixer, 
a hand mixer or I'm doing it analog style just with a whisk. Once it's all combined and creamed together, you're gonna add in your eggs one at a time and mix until it's completely smooth. Once we've reached this stage, we're gonna add in our almond milk and our lemon juice, and we're gonna mix all this together as well. To that very same bowl, we're gonna add our gluten-free flour, our baking powder, and our salt. Mix on low speed or with your whisk, just until the dry ingredients are incorporated. Then you're gonna use a silicone spatula to fold the ingredients together until a smooth batter forms. You only need to do this a few times. You don't wanna to knock too much air out of the batter. I've got a small bowl here and I'm going to use this to toss my cup of frozen wild blueberries with my tablespoon of gluten-free flour. This is meant to coat the blueberries so that they have an easier time being suspended in the cake batter and that way they don't all sink to the bottom. Um, if you stick around, you'll see that it didn't exactly work that way for me, but it's worth a try. It's in the recipe, so I went ahead and I did it. I'm now spooning out the blueberries. I'm leaving all the loose flour behind and I'm putting them into the batter. Fold the berries into the batter really gently and only a few times because if the berries burst, then you're no longer going to have a white cake. You're gonna have a purple cake. If that's the look you're going for, then great. Otherwise, let's be gentle as we're folding these in. We're gonna go ahead and put our batter into our cake pan. If you were using a loaf pan like the recipe calls for, you would put this in there for 60 to 65 minutes. I Googled a conversion for an eight um, inch pan instead and it said to do 40 minutes. So that's what I did and our cake was perfectly baked. I let the cake sit in the pan for about 30 minutes before opening the ring to remove the spring form. And I also had parchment paper at the bottom so that it wouldn't stick to the bottom of the pan. I want the cake to cool completely before glazing it so that the glaze actually has a chance to harden. And it's really, really easy to make the glaze. You just take the powdered sugar and three teaspoons of lemon juice and just stir it together until the glaze is formed pretty much. If you wanna make sure that it's super smooth, you could sift the sugar into the bowl so that there's no lumps. Once your glaze is ready and smooth, you could pour it over the top of the cake and kind of gently coax it off to the sides so that it cascades over the entire cake. Give it about 15 minutes to start to harden and well, glaze up and then it is ready to serve. This cake was so good, just sweet enough, a little bit dense, a little bit citrusy, and I realized I couldn't trust myself with the whole cake. So after I had this one piece, I cut another couple to set aside, but the rest got served up on a platter and sent over to my parents' house so that they could help me enjoy this cake and also kind of save me from myself. All right, friends, there you have it. Um, as you saw, the blueberries kind of sank to the bottom and I coated them with the flour, which usually that helps kind of suspend them in the batter so that that doesn't happen. It happened anyways. I don't know what else I could have done, but regardless, I don't think it affected the texture too much. It definitely didn't affect the flavor. I thought the cake was absolutely delicious, but I love lemony desserts. And this is definitely like, punch of citrus all the way. It was pretty easy to make. It was really, really good. Um, it's great for breakfast the next day, as I can personally confirm. And I think it would definitely be a welcome addition to any Easter breakfast or brunch spread. If you decide to make this recipe, I would love for you to come on back and let me know how you liked it. And now that you've seen what I've made, I hope that you'll check out that playlist and see what all of our friends put together as well. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope that you will please give it a big thumbs up. 
I'd also love it if you would subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye!